In this lesson, we're going to update our React app to asynchronously fetch Spotify data and a use effect hook and display that data in our template. First, let's add some global Axios defaults to our Spotify.js file. We'll scroll down below our get access token function and add the following. Here, we set the base URL and HTTP request headers for every HTTP request we make with Axios. These configs are super convenient for keeping our code clean. We won't have to worry about including them each time we make a request with Axios. Next, we'll add a function that makes a get request to Spotify's slash me endpoint, which gets a current user's profile. Let's add that below. So note that since we set the base URL globally, we don't need to spell out the entire HTTPS API.spotify.com URL. All we need to include is slash me. Next, we can head back on over to our app.js file and import this get current user profile function. Then we can add another use state hook to keep track of the data it returns. We'll call the state variable profile. And set it to null initially. Next, in the use effect hook, I want to call the get current user profile function and set that to our profile state variable. So here I will create a function, an asynchronous function called fetch data. And I'll just call it below. And in here, since a uh, get current user profile returns a promise, I want to use a try catch block. And in the try block here, I want to await the get current user profile function. And since we're using Axios, um, remember that the JSON data that is returned from the Spotify API endpoint is uh, a property called data on the response object. So I can just destructure that here. And then I will set the data to our profile state variable. All right, so if we hit login to Spotify, and we can see we're logged in now, and then the data we get back is the JSON data that we want. Let's go ahead and use this data to display some information in our template. So if we take a look at our JSON data here, we have things called display name, we have an email, um, we have images, which is the profile image of my Spotify profile. Um, and we have a bunch of other things. So let's head down to our logged in state. And under our button, we can do a ternary and say profile and and. So once the profile state variable is not null, we will render the following. Um, maybe we'll have an h1, say profile.display name. Give that a save. Awesome. After that, maybe we'll have um, the number of followers we have. So here you can see I have a total of 25 followers. And we'll say profile.followers.total. And if we take a look at the error here, it says we have uh, to make sure there's one parent element in this um, piece of JSX. So we can go here and just wrap this in a div. Awesome. And then maybe after this, I can um, make sure that we render a profile image as well. So we'll say profile.images.length. And if the first item in the images array has a URL, we'll render an image tag and we'll say profile.images, the first image. And give that a save and awesome it looks like all of the data came through 
So if we scroll back up to our use effect hook here, you may notice that we're wrapping our um, async function in a try catch block. Um, and that's because we want to make sure if there's any errors when awaiting this um, promise that we handle our errors. Um, and turns out there's a way we can dry this up a bit, and we can do that with a higher order function. Um, so higher order functions are functions that operate on other functions, either by taking them as arguments or by returning them. And in our case, our higher order function is going to take an asynchronous function, in this case, fetch data, as an argument and wrap our asynchronous code in a try catch for us. So if we head on over to our client directory and we create a utils.js file, and in here we'll add our catch errors higher order function, which takes a function as an argument and returns a function, which returns a function that has a catch chained onto it. Then in our app.js file, we can import this catch errors function and wrap our fetch data function in it. So first we'll go up here and say import catch errors from utils. And then down here in our use effect hook, we can get rid of this try catch block and instead wrap this fetch data invocation in a catch errors higher order function. If you want to keep learning about how to build real world apps with the latest technologies and other career related topics, then start right now by subscribing to our channel and liking this video.